before my big Extra Life live stream on November 7th, I'm doing a special Halloween live stream. I love horror movies, but hate playing video games that scare me. So I'm going to share my picks for best non-scary horror games during my not-so-scary Halloween live stream on Monday, October 26th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch and chat with me on both youtube.com slash christiangeekcentral and if all goes well, twitch.tv slash christiangeekcentral. Yeah, this is kind of a test to see if I can do both at the same time, and frankly, that is plenty scary enough for me. Dark creatures of the night and otherworldly horrors await. But don't worry, there's nothing to be afraid of, just lots of video game fun you can join me for this Monday, October 26th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific. Hope to see you there. Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about 2020's The Witches on HBO Max? Stick around and find out. I really could have used a, a nice classic Danny Elfman score with this movie. That would have been a nice touch. Anyway, hi, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of The Witches. Recently released on HBO Max, the synopsis on IMDb reads, Reimagining Roald Dahl's beloved story for a modern audience, Robert Zemeckis' visually innovative film hmm, tells the darkly humorous and heartwarming tale of a young orphan boy who, in late 1967, goes to live with his loving grandma in, rural, in the rural Alabama town of Demopolis. As the boy and his grandmother encounter some deceptively glamorous but thoroughly diabolical witches, she wisely whisks him away to a seaside resort. Regrettably, they arrive at precisely the same time that the world's Grand High Witch has gathered her fellow cronies from around the globe undercover to carry out her nefarious plans. Zemeckis is joined by a world-class team of filmmakers, including Alfonso Cuaron, uh, I don't know if, you've, if that's how you pronounce that, Guillermo del Toro, and Kenya Barris. The cast includes powerhouse performances from Anne Hathaway, Octavia Spencer, Stanley Tucci, Kristen Chenoweth, and Chris Rock, with new Newcomer Jazir Kadeen Bruno as the brave young hero. All right. Um, I read this book when I was, I don't know, in, in elementary school and maybe as late as junior high. I can't, I think, no, no, it was elementary school. And uh, I saw the, the movie that came out in like, I want to say the late 80s or early, very early 90s with Angelica Houston as the Grand High Witch. And actually just watched that a couple of weeks ago with my boys who are ages uh, 9 and 13 at the moment and sat down and watched this movie, this remake, this update, with them also last night. And uh, regrettably, because of timing and stuff, I couldn't have them join me for this movie. But uh, long story short, they seem to enjoy it, and about as much as the original movie, which surprised me a little bit. Watching that first movie again, I was like, this is kind of an odd movie. It feels kind of like B-movie quality, or maybe it was made on a budget, you know, in another country, and they cut corners. There's just some weird budgety things that show up in that, despite the fact that Jim Henson's Creature Shop was involved and Angelica Houston was a big name and stuff. Um, anyway, so coming to this one, I was expecting it to be this major improvement in experience for me since revisiting the, the original was uh, oddly disappointing for me, although my boys enjoy it, enjoyed it. But uh, this one, I, I really can't say that I enjoyed any more, I don't think, than, than the original movie. It's reimagined, it's described that way uh, in the marketing, and... I don't know how reimagined it is. It's been way too long since I read the book to know kind of like all the changes that were made. Basically, from the original movie, they just changed some minor plot beats. They added a bit of racial tension as a theme, and that's about it. I don't remember if the book was a period piece in the 60s or not, but you know, those, those were the only things that were seemed like a noteworthy change. And I mean, change of location as well, some uh, from the last movie anyway. Uh, this does strike me as being a proper movie treatment, though, as opposed to the B-movie vibe that I got, you know, going back to the, uh, to, to the first movie. Um, it, it starts out as a movie that 
seems like it's going to be layered for both kids and adults. In other words, it's a movie that's largely for kids, but with some grown-up themes and acting that's done with, with a caliber that's aiming to connect with adults as well. It, so it really starts that way and deals with some heavy themes of loss, and I think does that respectfully. But it really becomes, to me, a children's movie after the first 30 minutes. There's a major shift that happens with uh, the, the main character in his status quo. And after that, uh, there's, it really just feels like a, like, a, like a kid's movie. The first witch that the young boy encounters struck me as eerie and creepy. And I thought, oh man, this is there. She's really going for some bold choices, and it's coming off. I think like it's supposed to. It's very eerie to me. But after that, encounters with witches struck me as uh, cartoonish. And they, as villains, they were more cartoon characters than they were actual threats. Um, the uh, as far as the cast and the performances go, Octavia Spencer plays the grandma, and I, I really thought she elevated the movie a ton in the first thirty minutes. As the young boy, it, you know, right out of the gate, you you learn that he's lost his parents and he's orphaned, and so he has to live with his grandmother. and And I thought just the way that she performed those scenes with that child actor were just really strong, uh, and and really gave it some. Uh, just some real world drama for me to kind of to, to anchor me into investment with the story. But after that, after about the first 30 minutes, she is largely interacting with C cute little CGI characters for the rest of the movie. And there seems to be a change in her performance to me that, that maybe as a result of that, or maybe they just were going for a tonal shift because it just, her acting seems just a little bit outside of reality, just a little bit. Uh, elevated, just or, or not elevated, a little bit exaggerated, maybe something, a style of acting that I would expect more from a kids' movie with live-action characters interacting with CGI characters. So it really does seem to transition, even with her performance, into a kids' movie tone after that. And Hathaway, on the other hand, really comes across to me as a cartoonish style villain throughout, from the first time you see her until the very end. So it, it, it just, all those elements, the performance elements are really contributing to making this just a full-on kids movie. And that's really what the first movie was as well. I, I guess I was just hoping, especially since this movie started in what felt like a different way to me, that they would continue to have uh, a, an experience that was layered for both kids and adults without any kids present to be able to enjoy on its own merits. As far as the stunts and visuals go, you know, the, the description from IMDb s talked about this being visually innovative, and I don't know, I, I don't know what that might be referring to. I mean, that is marketing speak from the people who made the movie, you know. I, I didn't find the, the set dressing or the d design, the visual designs to be all that innovative, and I certainly didn't find, unfortunately, the effects to be innovative. It felt like the, fi the effects were executed in the same way that you would see in a comedy or a kid's movie, where there is just less emphasis on realism. They just are content to let the effects be and feel kind of cartoony and animated. Whereas in a more serious sci-fi movie or fantasy movie, uh, they'll very often go for something that is trying to look more realistic. And I just didn't feel that was the case in this movie. So uh, a little bit disappointing there. As far as like the themes going on in this, uh, I think that there maybe are some themes that they're going for or that you could pick out. They do seem to be going for some themes of racial inequality and giving some commentary on that. Um, and uh, But it's not as heavy-handed as it could have been like I, I thought is are they going for like this thing where they're talking about um, African Americans and like the, the the poor demographic of African Americans and kind of being downtrodden and stuff and and uh, I thought maybe like are they gonna go for that consistently all the way through but yet there was this uh, this um, wealthy white couple that when they met the young uh, black boy were not treating him like crap or I was like okay so they're not going I, I appreciated that that they 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 didn't like have this really blatant and overly exaggerated kind of class thing going on oh crap what is this for oh yeah I gotta check the rat trap in our shed it's uncut these are uncut reviews I'm not leaving any of this stuff out Anyway, uh, so I, I, I'm glad it wasn't heavy-handed. It would have felt really out of place, but I, but I think that they're present enough that if, if you wanted to start a conversation on, the, on those topics, you probably could. The grandma is interesting. She is 
kind of gives signs of being culturally Christian. You know, there's a time where they're praying. She talks about the good Lord this and the good Lord that, you know. Uh, but she also is known for making these potions and she's like gets out crystals and stuff is, is kind of doing this kind of meditation or incantation type stuff. And, and the, the, the boy in the kind of growing pain style, older man looking back narration uh, reflects on her as, you know, being like a voodoo priestess or maybe being a voodoo. I can't remember if he compared her or said that she what he thought that she was a voodoo priestess, but that was in a, uh, that was in a positive, that there was a pon positive connotation to that. So it wasn't like a freaky thing. It was like, she was awesome. She was of like a voodoo priestess, you know? So uh, it's interesting that they're, that they have the witches as being evil, but yet there are these other kinds of, you know, really kind of sorcery or witchcraft or whatever that are being seen as as good. Uh, so it's it's a weird kind of relativistic blend of spirituality going on in this movie that's being affirmed. Um, I think that the beginning and end of the movie have themes about finding joy and happiness again after tragic life-altering events, but they're very lightly presented though. I mean, this is a kid's movie, so really none of the themes jumped out at me. They seemed like little statements that were possibly, you know, at least two out of the three I mentioned were, were probably intentionally stated, um, but, but not very strongly it's again it's it's a kids movie so they're they're not being really preachy or heavy-handed with the, whatever it is that they're trying to get across now i have no idea what your tastes are in movies but if i were a time traveler i'd go back in time and say pater ah skip this one um i mean your boys are gonna like it and so if you want to watch a movie with them then uh that they will enjoy and you're willing to just kind of sacrifice an hour and a half of your time. It's not overly painful to sit through, but you're not the audience for this movie. And it's it's going to be hard to not mentally check out of the experience after the first 30 minutes. It's rated PG for scary images slash moments, language, and thematic elements. All right, those are my thoughts. I would love to get yours in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, click that bell to stay connected. Uh, I want to thank the Spirit Blade Insiders for making this review possible. For more information about the benefits of becoming an insider, you can go to patreon.com slash Productions, And then, of course, I hope you'll join us soon over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. Before my big Extra Life live stream on November 7th, I'm doing a special Halloween live stream. I love horror movies, but hate playing video games that scare me. So I'm going to share my picks for best non-scary horror games during my not-so-scary Halloween live stream on Monday, October 26th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch and chat with me on both YouTube.com slash Christian Geek Central and, if all goes well, Twitch.tv slash Christian Geek Central. Yeah, this is kind of a test to see if I can do both at the same time, and frankly, that is plenty scary enough for me. Dark creatures of the night and otherworldly horrors await. But don't worry, there's nothing to be afraid of, just lots of video game fun. You can join me for this Monday, October 26th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific. Hope to see you there.